Today we're going to be working on a very expensive diagnostic tool. I've worked on this very same tool. I have a video on our channel that you can check out. And this one is the VAS6154 Audi diagnostic tool. You can only buy this tool from Audi. And I've worked on this very same board before. It looks something like this. We already disassembled the motherboard from the casing, from the housing. And the technician that came in with this tool, he brought three pieces. We fixed three pieces for them. It's a dealership in Van Nuys for Audi and Volkswagen vehicles. And every single one of them that he brought in had a ripped USB connector. The USB connector is not through hole and it's very weak. This tool is $2,100 refurbished off eBay. The tech that came in said that you can only buy this from Audi and currently Audi is not supplying its dealers with this tool because of shortage. But if you look on eBay, VAS6154, $2,100, $2,600 for a used unit. Of course, you cannot buy it new from third party because this tool is sold by Audi. This is not a $50 tool. It's not a $100 tool. Like some of you wrote in the comments when I worked on this board, they thought it's a car diagnostic tool that costs $50. It's not. A very expensive tool. And you cannot even get that tool right now. Let's take a look at the board and I already see a repair attempt on that connector. We can tell by the flux. I mean, every single one of those devices that we got in had a USB connector issue. I'll show you. Every single one of them. Such an expensive tool and they cannot make the connector a through hole so it can hold. Look at the back. Why? You damage this, you cannot even send it to Audi to fix. If you look here, you can see that every single pin have pulled off the board, probably ripped all the pads on the board, like we did with the previous video, working on this same unit. The customer looks like he attempted to work on it, or whoever worked on it, we can tell by the flux here, and they knocked off this component slightly, we're going to have to fix it. We're going to have to remove this whole connector and reuse it and fix whatever is under here. All five pads. I think we have five missing pads under the connector. Maybe we can get rid of some of the access holder on the sides because we want to reuse the connector. We do not want to damage the connector. Now the tech that came in who brought three pieces, he said that there is a small adapter that can hook up to the device in the front so the USB does not break. But even those they cannot get from Audi right now. Fume extractor on. Right, and now we should be able to remove the connector, assuming it's not making a connection from the front and I did not see that it's making a connection from the front. I just pulled on the connector so it does not solder itself back on this side. Let's jump over to the other side, go over it one more time, and we should be able to safely remove this connector. It looks like we have a pad that pulled from the side, right? Yeah, look at this. The pad is broken from right here, and that's a support pad. That's an Audi diagnostic tool. Why can't they make it last forever? Nothing lasts forever, but the connector design is very weak, very bad. And this pad is weak also, the one in the front. At least we have pads because the others I've worked on did not have any pads. No pads left. Now look at this. Not even a single pad left. One, two, three, four, five. Gone. Gone with the wind. Nothing. Get rid of the glare using the anti-glare light. If you have not watched the video on the anti-glare light, just search Northridge Fix anti-glare. We carry and sell this light. Log in to northridgefix.com. Click on shop and all the tools that you need to fix and repair, 
you can purchase from our site. Everything is stocked and everything ships out almost always same day. And we're going to use our nf.mini tool for this job. Very nice. And very nice. The resistor is soldered back better than factory. This pad is actually going to a via. We can tell from here. It's going to a via that's probably going to back of the board. So we're gonna have to grind this via here, the mask on the via, and then we're gonna have to solder a pad that connects here. And then we're gonna have to connect this pad to where? To right here. I remember this. And this one connects right here. And this one connects right here, this pad. And just look at how precise this grinding pan is. We need to clean the bit because there's something stuck onto it, but that's okay. And we do not need to grind this, but we can make it shine. Why not? We charge extra for shining and polishing, so why not? Sometimes when I make jokes like that, that we charge extra for shining and polishing, some viewers believe it. They say, really? Are you charging for polishing? Come on. What planet do you live on? Like in one of the videos, I said that we're going to charge $100 per pad. And we had 24 pads to restore. And up till now, we got comments that why are we charging $100 per pad? Are we serious to charge $2,400 to fix 24 pads? Some people cannot differentiate between a joke and between being serious. Maybe because I joke while being serious. I don't know. And we're gonna be using our nf.mini pen. And the pen is absolutely amazing. We're going to be using pad strips number two or pad strips number four. Start with this one. Pad strips and nf.mini pen. Wow, what a combination. What a combination. And look at this tweezer. I opened it brand new last week. It fell on the floor. Game over. I need to use the grinding stone to make it straight again. But for now, I do not have time. It's working. And that's the thing about tweezers. It does not matter how much money you spend on a tweezer. If it falls once on the floor, it's over. You can fix it, but it will never go back being the same again. What we do is we end up grinding the bent tip a bit so we can make it straight again. The grinding stone does a pretty good job. I have a video using the grinding stone. You can look at it. Uh, 
And this one is perfect. Very nice. Now we have one more. And right now it looks like I do not have any more of those long pad strips. Okay, I did find pad strips four on my bench. And this one has a lot. And that's why it's more expensive. Because it's basically the same as pad strips too, but it has a lot more. Probably over 2,500 pads on there. Let's grab this one here. We need to ask the factory not to make it so sticky. Look at this, it's a little bit hard to remove. Some of them I can remove so easily and some of them I struggle. If you've bought those pad strips, you can use some alcohol, put it on that yellow card and it should make it easier to remove the pads. Those pads we're not going to be able to restore. The pad is totally ripped off from here. Even if we extend the pad from here to here, that pad will be loose from the side. It will be loose from that side. And the same goes from the side here. Right there. All right, and just give me a minute. Hello, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. Yeah. How is everything going? Uh, everything is fine. Eh? All right. This is a computer. It's not mine. It's from a friend, and I don't know what she did, but uh, I guess she tried to upgrade it to Windows 10 at some point, and then it, it wouldn't start. And I tried to reset it, uh, to restore it many times from uh, whatever partition it has. For a while, it looks like there was some hope, but I ended up here. Uh, okay, no, no bootable, bootable device. device plus restart system. Oh, I see. So, um, and let's grab the connector right here and look at this. All five pads are still stuck on the pins. How do we get rid of them? Just go upwards like this. Up. If you try to go down, it's a little bit difficult. So we secured one leg and uh, we're going to try to secure the other leg. Is it possible? It's not very possible, but we're going to add whatever solder we can. And at the end, we're going to have to add some glue on the sides to secure that connector. The connector is weak. 
we may be able to add a solder blob right here to secure that connector. You pay two, three thousand dollars for this device, and that's what you get, SMT. You know that this device is gonna be used and abused. We're gonna have to add a bigger blob. And just like that. Okay, now the fun part. We're gonna have to use our NF.mini pen. There's no way I can use the regular soldering iron to do that job because the NF.mini, look at how precise it is. Let's clean the tip. Uh, just a tiny bit of solder right here. And you see how solder sticks onto the tip? That's a quality tip. I've been using this tip for the past maybe four months and it's absolutely amazing. I need to add more solder onto the tip. Just like that. Maybe I add it a little bit more than we need because if we have a lot of solder on the tip then it's going to be hard to get the tip in between this component and the connector so i need to adjust a tiny bit and i need a little bit of flux on the tip to make solder flow nicely Now let's see if the pins made a good connection, a solid connection with the pad strips. Hey, what's up, Lenny? How are you, man? I got those here. UPS just picked up for the third time today. Let's tackle it from this angle also. All right, and we should be all good. Let's go ahead and test, make sure all the pins, all the pad strips are making a connection with the pins. We wanna see the pin moving along with the pad strip. Like this, you see? Solid, solid, solid. Solid and solid. Beautiful. We're done. We are done except for the adhesive part. We need to add glue on the sides. After doing such a beautiful job, we do not want to get the brush and start scrubbing left and right. Trying to test your muscles. We don't do that. Just nice and gentle. We know you're tough, but easy. I'm gonna use the rapid fuse adhesive. Looks something like this. And I do not wanna apply it everywhere, so let's cut one of our swabs at an angle. That will create a sharp edge that we can use to apply glue. We have a sharp edge here because I cut it at an angle. Let's apply it on this end also.
I need to cut this swab again at an angle. All right, we're done. So we're gonna leave this until tomorrow and it's gonna harden like a rock. But is it working? I do not know if we should plug a cable and test it now or if we should wait until tomorrow. I wanna finish the video, so let's take our chance. Plug it in right now. And I'll be extra careful. When I plug the cable, we should see lights on the board. If it breaks, I'm gonna blame it on you. Because you rushed me into testing this. Not my fault. Right there. See it? We have the green light and we have the blinking blue light. Awesome. Amazing. Let me gently remove the cable. Gentle. Okay. Very nice. All right, we're done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.